Portfolio Builder members, welcome to your February 7th update. Market just closed. Let's review our strategy. We are out of the SPY. You can see I've marked this down to zero shares of the SPY, two shares of TLT, two GDX, one Yang, and now you should have 373 in cash. And this is, again, based on $737. Now, normally, we'd want to have two shares of the SPY, two shares of emerging markets, but it looks like we have a crisis being covered up by the Chinese and U.S. government. They're trying to keep everybody calm, uh, but I'll show you that things are about to really hit the fan in the next few weeks. And even next week, there's an event that I believe will create a sell-off, a little sell-off in the SPY. Uh, so again, if you had $7,370, you would be... Uh, multiplying all this by 10 so you'd still have zero shares of the spy uh, but next week when I go back long which will probably be uh, Thursday for the buy and hold and Wednesday for our options program uh, then you would have 2 times 10 so you'd be 20 shares of the spy 20 shares of the TLT 20 shares of GDX and then again I, I like to be long emerging markets but not right now, not when they are in a crisis. So instead of having the two shares of emerging markets, we have one share of Yang. Yang is the inverse ETF of large cap Chinese companies, triple leveraged. So we're not going to have two of those, even though they cost about the same as EEM. Uh, so again, if you're just watching this, subscribe to the channel and you'll get our free portfolio daily with all the most critical news. That's what we're looking at right here. Very sexy return, a little more volatility. There are limitations to what we can do in this portfolio because it will not use options. It's really for beginners, and it's a good way to start building trust with Portfolio Builder. Now, this is a program we've charged $1,000 a year for, but again, if you do sign up for our channel, which is, of course, free, and hit the notification bell, it's absolutely yours free. Now, in our more advanced program, we have tens of millions of dollars following these trades, and it comes with a live webinar every day. These webinars tend to go for two hours, and we usually have at least 30 people live, although there are now hundreds of paid subscribers who are following this program. Now, to follow our same strategy but applying options does require a lot more money. So you have to have 100 shares of the SPY, 200 shares of TLT, 200 shares of GDX, and 200 shares of emerging markets to get the right allocation of capital into the stock market, which we have in the SPY and emerging markets, the bond market, which we get the cream of the crop with the TLT, and that's your 30-year bond from the U.S. Treasury, and then an inflation hedge. What happens when you print too much money? Inflation, GDX. Okay, so gold can survive when stocks and bonds both crash. Uh, and really, I think this will be the position we can hold on to the longest. Now, notice the return's a little bit smaller, guys, but we've only lost money in one month. And I'm very confident February is going to be a big profit uh, as we are picking up a lot of profits on the SPY already. And we're just waiting for the TLT to give us a little pop, and then we'll lock in that profit. So in this program, people are paying us not for a greater return, but for less volatility. So note... The only time we lost money, I positioned us for a trade war escalation last July, and then Trump uh, backed down. Now, he did do it in August, and note we made a profit. Remember the Christmas massacre? We made 1.2%. Uh, so it's really a very safe strategy when you apply option callers and you buy lots of 100, because you can sell a covered call, and then you can buy a put, and now you're extremely safe. So again, if you do want to click in the right-hand corner or go to the description box, you can join our email webinar list. Also, you get text messages with the alerts. And, uh, and follow the program with a group of people live. So you can meet other people who do follow our trades. And again, this particular program uh, now has tens of millions of dollars, at least that I'm aware of, following it. Uh, it could be significantly more. And again, it's if you like low-risk, safe profits with very, very small opportunity to lose because you have extreme precaution with the options market. 
And most people use options to get rich. We use it to be safe. Okay, so let's go back to our buy and hold. We're playing them relatively the same, uh, but the big difference in the buy and hold is you have to use your TLT as your defense mechanism when you're long the SPY. And rarely do I want to not own both when I'm doing a buy and hold strategy. Uh, but right now I see such a huge disconnect in the news, uh, the official news and the uh, price action in stocks versus what I know is really happening. So here's the headline. John Hopkins, who we've been relying on for the updates uh, on the coronavirus, has delayed any data today. Uh, they updated something at 1130. But I know just from the cruise ships, just from the cruise ships, all the cases hitting that all the numbers per country should be doubling, maybe even tripling. Okay, so that hasn't updated. I suspect it will a little later today. Uh, so that's one big no-no. And we'll look at the update. There's very little new data that came in. Um, and I know there's many new cases to report. So they are holding that back. The next big news is China's San Francisco. So this is one of its most important cities. It's it's arguably its single most important city because of the tech development there. Shenzhen is now locked down. In fact, if anyone in your apartment complex comes down with the virus, you can't leave the apartment complex, anyone in the entire apartment complex for for a minimum of two weeks. So I don't know how you get food. I guess you order it. Uh, Guangzhou is their manufacturing powerhouse. This is really what's fueling their money-making operations to fuel their ambitions in tech. So China wants to surpass the United States in AI, in telecommunications, and uh, really those are their two core focuses. So if they can take over the 5G and phone uh, business, that's really the future. And in Shenzhen, they operate Tencent, which has been busy buying out every app under the sun that has to do with communication. Uh, so that's their goal. Attorney General Barr did a announcement uh, today or, or this week for 30 minutes, really just going over the risk China poses the U.S., how they're trying to use Huawei to essentially give away their equipment to take over market share. And they are way ahead in the infrastructure layout for 5G, uh, which could be a $22 trillion industry, plus all the application and technology that piles on top of that. And the leverage it would create is astonishing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they have 400 million people on some fashion of a lockdown. Even in the less... Risky cities, only one person from your house gets to leave every two days to get food. So everyone's trying to work from home, uh, but their internet's not fast enough for this. So, so this is causing a lot of problems. Uh, banks are now estimating that they could go to negative GDP this year, much less, uh, you know, worrying about 6% GDP. And, uh, you know, even more important than all of this, potentially, is that the U.S. government has its notes and its bonds to sell next week. Uh, if I scroll down, uh, in fact, uh, we'll look at it in a minute, the actual treasury auctions, but they have $87 billion of debt to sell. And so if the U.S. government wants to sell its debt at a low interest rate, it's actually very beneficial for stocks to be selling off. And uh, while our central bank, the Federal Reserve, is buying the T-bills, that's debt less than a year old, they're not buying the notes, which is your uh, three to 10 year tre treasury or your bonds, which is currently just a 30 year bond, although we're adding a 20 year. So it'd make a lot of sense for the government, at least to have a orchestrated sell off in stocks and to let out some bad news into next week. So this uh, debt auction does start on Tuesday and ends on Thursday. So for my best prediction, we'll see a sell-off early next week and uh, then a huge gap open Friday using the futures market. So for our options program, we did a very neat trade where we still own the SPY. We sell an in-the-money call and buy a juicy put option. And it creates what I call a bear option caller. This setup we can lose. Now, remember, we have to buy 100 shares of the SPY, so your buy-in is starting at 33 grand to be able to follow the strategy. 
We're going to sell a call option for a huge credit because it's in the money. And then we're going to buy a put. And it gives you a situation where if the market goes up, you can lose $50 per set of 100 shares of SPY maximum. And if it goes down to the level where we've sold our in-the-money call, we can generate up to $450. So that's about a 1.3% potential return uh, on the SPY trade between now and Monday. TLT is popping up today. GDX, again, the typical trend is you get a panic, money flows into bonds, bonds get repriced, then gold plays catch up. So I'd expect to see TLT rise faster than G GDX until this slows down, and then GDX speeds up. Okay, so we're still long those. I do intend to potentially get put option under TLT if we get a big pop next week, and then I'll probably wait till the following week to add a put to GDX. And again, uh, this current posturing where we're naked long the TLT and GDX, I don't usually do that. Typically, I'll have a caller on everything, uh, but right now I see absolutely zero risk to major losses in the TLT or gold, just understanding the macro environment. We're in a very risky situation globally, and it's being covered up, so we haven't even seen the big jump in the TLT yet. The bigger risk is a sharp sell-off in the SPY. So with our option strategy, we don't even have to worry about that, uh, but I'm a little bit worried about the news flow and expect some big prints in the confirmed case count to jump uh, by Tuesday next week, but perhaps by Sunday. So I do think we could start to see a sell-off uh, Monday morning. So that's my expectation. Uh, and again, I would love to flip this back to our normal strategy where we're long emerging markets. We have a bearish option caller on EEM as well. But before I see that, I need to see China opening up business, and I need to see the numbers of confirmed cases in the U.S. and Japan stop doubling week over week. Uh, okay, so that's the plan. I'm going to jump into some more information, a lot more information, but here's our disclaimer. Uh, again, testimonials we've collected were not compensated, but you should not be considered the average or typical result for every profit advertised, there could have been an equal loss. You can make mistakes following the trades that can result in losses. I can also make typos that could result in losses. Our model portfolio is hypothetical, so we can legally demonstrate trades without front-running our own clients. And if you go to portfoliobuilder.io forward slash disclaimer, you can get the full disclaimer but trading's risky you can lose your entire investment this is not financial advice some members of portfolio builder do follow our trades but they get them at the same time as you again we do not want to be accused of front running our clients uh, especially considering how much capital does follow us now in our option program it's very cool we give the trade at noon Eastern, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We all get on a live webinar together uh, to follow the trade at the same time. Now, these are the most liquid products in the world, the best assets. You really can't get a better portfolio for retirement, which is our ideal client. Okay, I'm going to jump into some news now. Okay, a few problems for wanting to bet on breaking into new highs next week. I was calling a top this week after predicting this huge move in the SPY. So, uh, you know, don't call me a bear. I've been predicting up on the SPY since October, and we've delivered some great returns from that. Uh, but now I think we have a sell-off next week, and uh, a few reasons why. One, I think that the, the news flow is going to get scary, uh, and the potential for supply chains to be broken down could become a bigger problem. Uh, plus China slowing down. But regardless, just from uh, trying to sell the U.S.'s massive deficit, which is over a trillion for 2020, they want to try to get the lowest interest rate possible, and they want to try to sell it uh, to foreigners. Uh, what's happened in the last couple of years from these massive deficits is our U.S. banking system is pretty much all in on these treasuries, so they have no money to lend. So if you've heard of Repo Madness... That's the U.S. banking system being uh, overran by debt from the government, which they have to buy. They're primary dealers. So if the foreigners don't pick it up, 
they have to. And they know if they go sell it all, it's going to wreck the U.S. government. So they can't do that. So they just pile it up, and now they're going into this repo strategy where they loan the Treasury to the Fed. The Fed gives them cash, and then they can go uh, back to the normal banking business model where they loan out money. Uh, now, where's that money going to? Well, it's primarily going to broker-dealers who loan it out to hedge funds and retail investors who want to use leverage. So here's a huge stress hitting the banking system, which could cause a dry up in liquidity. So I'd expect to see a lot of repo next week, oversubscription, meaning more people want money than the Fed's currently agreeing to borrow or to lend. Uh, and also the government knows if we're gonna let out bad news, don't let it go to waste. And so this is the debt that the Federal Reserve won't touch yet. That's why they claim the $60 billion, uh, of minimum, which I don't know why they say it's $60 billion a month, because I'll show you they're buying more like $160 billion <laughs> a week and uh, of T-bills. Now, the notes and the bonds, they're not touching it. In fact, they're allowing that to roll off. They're selling a massive amount of mortgage-backed securities, um, and they're buying up all of the short-term U.S. debt, which does represent most of our debt. Uh, but next week is a rare week because at the start of each month, uh, and in this case, the second week, that's when they tend to sell this block of debt. And it will be long gone after this, and they won't have to worry about it again until next month. So uh, anytime there's a big block of debt that can't be swept under the rug and handed over to the Fed and repo, uh, you might want to watch out for hedge funds trying to attack the stock market realizing that there could be a crunch of liquidity. Now, the banks know this, the government knows this, so their best bet is to leak some bad news, create a little bit of a sell-off, and then uh, gap it back open in the futures market. So if you saw this week these huge jumps in the SPY, three bucks, five bucks, they're just gapping the market higher and not letting it trade through the day, which doesn't allow people to react and sell for a profit. Uh, and really punishes anyone who's not buying and holding. So they're trying to punish you for not holding your stocks no matter how bad things get. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to point out. And the primary reason I don't want to be uh, a bag holder next week, at least early next week. Okay, the next data I like to look at for predicting the stock market is uh, what has the Fed, Federal Reserve done with its balance sheet? And at least at this point in time, the main thing I'm interested in for predicting stock market is whether this number is in the tens of thousands. If it's in the tens of thousands, that represents uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 billion dollars. If it's growing by at least 20 billion dollars per week, uh, it'll be something like the explosion in equities we saw from October through December. Now keep in mind, I've been watching this like a hawk. And the trend has been a very rapid growth in the balance sheet, bringing us up to $4.2 trillion. So until January, when all the crises hit, which makes it easy for governments to sell debt, uh, we were seeing them have to pick up about $100 billion a month in the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. And so this was turning into essentially more money in the U.S. dollar system, which made the relative value of stocks go up. And so this trend stopped in January uh, and has continued to be flat. So that's a flat print for me. Anything under $10 billion really is small. Uh, so this is, again, based on the average balance. And we've seen it either go flat or down significantly. Uh, ever since we've had two big crises hit. One was the Middle East attacks on the oil uh, and also on the embassy. And then next, we have the coronavirus starting to really take its toll. Now that's being covered up. Uh, so from predicting the stock market, we really want to focus on the bond market, funny enough. So if we think the government's going to be able to successfully sling its debt next week, and the U.S. banking system won't have to pick it up. There may not be an oversubscription in repo, 
and we may not see this balance sheet grow. And so that's been my prediction this week. It was accurate. Next week, I expect a lot more bad news flow so that, again, we can sell our debt, keep the dollar strong. The bigger this number grows, the weaker the dollar becomes. Okay, and that's really the secret to the U.S.'s power is protecting its dollar. The currency market's bigger than all the other markets put together, and especially for the U.S. Okay, so what about the bond market? Well, that's when we want to pay attention to what they're doing in terms of distorting and manipulating the uh, T-bill market, the notes and bonds. Uh, and really, these are the two markets I'm focusing on. So our TLT is highly relevant to the notes and bonds. Uh, so let's just scroll over and see what we've got here. So I'll put this on the line so we can scroll across. And sure enough, they're still doing what they promised. They've sold 62 trillion, or rather billion, in t uh, notes and bonds, which is what they've said they would do. Again, this is the asset that if they were buying, everyone would say what they're doing is QE. What they are buying, which is short-term debts that roll over in less than a year, sometimes in less than a week, is this huge $222 billion purchase right here. Now, they're claiming they're only going to buy $60 billion a month currently. And the way they get away with that uh, is because a lot of this debt is rolling over so quickly. Uh, perhaps the total does add up to that. Now, also note, they have been massively able to sell their mortgage-backed securities, or at least to allow them to expire and not to be rolled over. So uh, the real estate market's looking very healthy, and the bond market's looking very healthy. So they're not having to support that. They're just supporting our short-term debts. So we'll look at uh, the yield curve in a minute to, to get an idea of what's really going on here. Uh, but again, bottom line is the Fed is buying short-term U.S. debt, so they're not manipulating down yet uh, the portion that we're playing. The TLT, again, plays the bonds and the notes. Now, if the Fed did come in and start buying up that portion of the yield curve, our TLT would skyrocket higher. So that would be great. Uh, currently, that's just not happening. And again, that could create concerns for the dollar and make everyone question how healthy the financial system is. So they're trying to avoid panic. Okay, so the corporate bond market's the last chance for uh, an expansion of money into the stock market. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Okay, so how else could the stock market keep climbing if the Fed's not going to be uh, expanding its balance sheet next week as a primary driver? Well, this ETF, LQD, is the investment grade corporate bond fund this is what's fueling all the corporate buybacks which you know if you remember trump bragging about 12 trillion in new wealth in the stock market well five trillion of that was from uh, the corporations buying back their own stocks and burning those stocks so think about it the now the corporation can make the same revenue the same profit margin but if they burn like apple about 20 percent of their open interest, well, that's going to boost earnings per share by 20% alone. So a lot of these top companies are doing both. They're growing earnings, they're growing revenue, and they're burning outstanding shares, which is making earnings per share go up. So if you think the stock market looks crazy, well, that's why. They're reducing the supply of stock. At the same time, the U.S. is increasing the supply of dollars, and all central banks are doing that. So that's the big picture. So I won't be really willing to bet against a SPY for a prolonged period of time until this thing is tanking. Okay, the, the higher this goes, that means more debt is being sold and at a lower interest rate. So expect a lot more corporate buybacks for your Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, etc. All your top S&P 500 companies. Okay, but the next one to look at is going to always be... HYG, your junk bond, and it's still plenty healthy. So uh, even your Russell 2000 companies, while it's not as cheap as it was in 2016 or 15 and 14, uh, it's still staging a rebound showing that there's more debt being sold and at a better price, so lower interest rate. So even your Russell 2000 companies, I think they're selling debt on an average of a 5% rate or something like that. So they can still get relatively cheap 
uh, access to capital to either buy back their own stocks or hopefully invest in uh, their company. Okay, the next chart I'd like to point out is DXY. This is heavily weighed against the, the euro, but also has exposure to emerging market countries who are uh, currently having a lot of trouble. Now, my line in the sand was 98. We busted through that, and right before that happened, or I think the day it did, we flipped. We flipped from being long emerging markets, realizing this means they are in big trouble, and I'll explain why in a moment, and we went long the U.S. bond market. Okay, so starting the year out, I thought that U.S. China are best buddies. We're going to essentially finance their Belt and Road Initiative. They're going to get their growth back on the up and up, get all these Chinese doing what they do best, building stuff. Um, and in turn, Chinese would reroute a bunch of their imports to benefit U.S. companies. So it's going to be extremely bullish for emerging markets and the U.S. But early in 2020... Uh, the SPY was doing just fine and dandy. Let me get a good chart. And emerging markets was not. And I would have never guessed in a million years that there would be a pandemic breaking out in China, potentially unleashed from a level four uh, pathogen bio lab in their own city. What a tragedy. Is it Chernobyl? Is it sinister? Is it an attack? Who knows? doesn't matter at this point. All that really matters is emerging markets uh, could potentially collapse this year. And uh, the dollar index is a great way to, to judge that. So dollar going up is bad for emerging markets. And in the short term, it's good for all U.S. products. The dollar, the U.S. stock market, as well as uh, the TLT, the bond market. So this is not signaling good things are happening in China. Now, long term, if world stocks crash for long enough, you better bet the SPY will follow suit. It's a very globalized economy. Uh, this is just a short term reaction where I expect if you had to choose Europe, China or the U.S. stock market, where are you going to go? You're going to go to the U.S. even if it's at all time highs. Uh, because these companies are having breakthrough revenues, and our country's not in a quarantine, at least currently. Okay, so let's talk about the coronavirus. I was talking to a lady who works in an airline, and they're telling her, don't worry about it. It's, it's uh, not even as bad as the flu. This is the CDC talking to her in some other newsletter. And I sent her some links, obviously. But I was just trying to get a feel if they had been trying to warn anyone. And the general theme is that we're getting videos of just massive, massive operations being set up to house tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Chinese who are sick, who will likely see a high percentage and by high, maybe three to 10% eventually pass away uh, in China. And so they're converting schools, universities, gymnasiums, basketball courts, everything they can possibly put a bed in into somewhere that they can quarantine and lock in suspected sick individuals. Now, this is not optional. You are forced to go to these, and uh, there's reports, and I have the clip. If you try to escape before you're excused, they'll shoot you. Uh, also, a, a video came out saying that you may get the death penalty if you try to hide your sickness. In Wuhan, they're now forcing you to report your temperature daily. Uh, now, I don't know how the hell they're going to do that with 10 million people. Okay, so look, let's look at this. The last update from John Hopkins was 1130. Okay, so, you know, what's, what's the delay there? The next thing I'd like to point out is that they actually uh, deleted a whole bunch of cases in Japan. Now, I zoomed in to see what the hell that was about because it went from 25 to 45 yesterday, back to 25. Like, what? Uh, but uh, if you zoom in, they are moving some of these to the cruise ship. So you got 61. So in my calculation, I have added all of the cruise ship to count as part of Japan's count, which brings it up to 100% growth day over day. And we'll look at that in a minute. The most of these uh, others just went flat. We got an update yesterday. That's what this one's based on. So we have not had a update today from China. That'll probably come out in the next few hours. Uh, but if we do look at this graph, 
uh, maybe a little more simple way to track whether it's growing exponentially or not. Oh, let me de-click that. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to ignore China. We know China's trying to cover this up, as is the U.S., uh, clearly. But just looking at this, we can see we went, f and this is updated yesterday, so they haven't updated this yet. Uh, but we went from 317 on the 6, 200, this is all locations outside of China. Uh, and so you can see this is growing at over 10% per, per day, which means it will double every, uh, every week. It's doubling every week. We are in trouble. So I really want to see this growth rate get below 10% and to see China opening up a uh, shop and removing all these lockdowns before I want to change my trading strategy. Okay, so here is the updated data. Again, not a lot of updates today, so I'm going to call you know, BS on this. I bet you we get a big update this weekend. Uh, but when I did add in the cruise ship uh, data, Japan at least did show growth of 91%. And there's more people being pulled off that cruise ship daily. In fact, just from the three cruise ships I've read about, all of these, because these people are spread out with all these countries, all these numbers would be going up significantly today. So I really think this is being held back. Uh, don't forget, we recently got 200 people out of the city of Wuhan. I think 280. And we were watching yesterday the hazmat suits with the air filters and an engine to clean the, uh, the air before it goes into the, the crazy hazmat suit. Uh, so yeah, you know, that's what they're wearing to protect themselves. So they're telling the airliners just to wear the little mask, but... Uh, anyway, what's happened with those 280 people? No updates there. Okay, so this is a really nice article that seems to update every couple hours on Zero Hedge. So it's a s static URL you can just bookmark and save. It's at the top. The, the current headline is Millions of Chinese Mourn Martyrs Doctor Punished for Cor Coronavirus. Uh, so that was the big thread yesterday. This doctor who had been uh, the whistleblower got thrown in jail. Then he got let out to go try to save people. And then six days later, from February 1st, he was diagnosed with it. And then by the 6th, he was dead. That was yesterday. And then the hospital didn't want to admit he was dead. And people were getting pissed. Uh, lots of people were deleted out of uh, China's internet, which is Weibo and WeChat. They don't have email. So anyways, that was the biggest thread yesterday. Uh, here's the headlines. Chinese quarantine Guangzhou. Shenzhen is now on lockdown. Hong Kong confirms case 25. Reporter says the real death count could be closer to 20,000. In fact, we saw Tencent leak that. That's the huge company in Shenzhen. Uh, so again... Just not getting better anytime soon. Here's a better view for us. Larry Kudlow took to Fox News to remind traders that the coronavirus outbreak is really China's problem, saying that the outbreak will likely hurt China's economy. Bad. Well, that's why we're along the bond market. Here they are noticing that also, like I have, that the death counts haven't updated or confirmed cases. They're just sitting on their hands with the updates. 29%, that's the percentage of the 138 coronavirus infected patients who are actually infected medical staff in one Wuhan hospital. Almost one in three patients being hospital health care workers is just insane. And this is highly contagious. And it's not like the flu because uh, it looks like a high percentage of people end up dying within a week of uh, hitting the cough. So once you get the fever, you got one to two weeks, and then you either survive or die. Guangzhou, the capital of China's southwestern Guangdong province and the country's fifth largest city with nearly 15 million residents, 
has just joined the ranks of cities, imposing a mandatory lockdown on all citizens, effectively trapping residents inside their homes with only limited permission to venture into the outside world to buy essential supplies. The decision means three provinces, 60 cities, and 400 million people are now facing China's most strict level of lockdown as Beijing struggles to contain the coronavirus outbreak as the virus has already spread to more than two dozen countries. And so these are where they're taking the sick. Every building that they can find is being set up. This looks just like the Spanish flu in 1918. One third of the earth caught the flu. 50 million died. JP Morgan now expects China's Q1 GDP to drop to 1% or crash to negative 4 if coronavirus is not contained. So this is detrimental to global markets. And my expectation is China cuts rates, does a lot of QE. Currency is going to have trouble. So if you're in our boot camp, that's where we're going to use the futures market to short the Chinese currency. You have to have an interactive broker's account to do that because it's an exotic trade only available at tr interactive brokers in the Hong Kong futures market. You cannot get this trade anywhere else. Uh, so look, looking forward to that. There's really a few ways to attack China's markets as far as the investor bet down on their stocks. I like EEM because uh, it tracks the whole area, not just China. They may be able to manipulate uh, some of their core companies uh, just by buying them themselves and making it illegal to sell. But in terms of protecting the whole area, that's really out of their reach. And that's what EEM accomplishes. Now in the Yang ETF, we're really just attacking the FXI ETF, the large cap Chinese stocks. So that's how we're doing in the buy and hold. In the options program, we're using a much more intelligent manner to do that. Uh, but anyway, if this happens, their stock market is toast. Um, and again, it all depends on how long they shut down and how long the rest of the world shuts them down. Uh, and so it's being covered up dramatically. It's hard to guess how bad this will get, but you can look at the price of oil. So I have uh, crude oil, and again, you can see it is crashing. If it goes below 50, uh, oil miners are in serious trouble. So this is a horrendous drop in the value of oil. And even when they injected a quarter trillion dollars this week, they got a little blip, but not enough. Uh, they may not be able to print enough money to, uh, to keep these markets up. They can protect it a little bit, and they can protect one market at a time. But there's no way to protect your currency, your bond market, your real estate market, and your stock market at the same time uh, and not cause inflation from printing too much. Uh, so they're going to have to pick and choose what they want to protect. And again, this will affect uh, everything. So th this, again, supports our entire strategy right here as China's the biggest importer of oil. All right, guys, so I'm just going to scroll through some of the footage on Twitter. Again, you can just go to Twitter type in hashtag coronavirus, go to videos. Now, we know Twitter does censor a lot. China has a firewall. It's unclear how these people get content out of China or if they're just allowing some of it to, to make it through. Maybe with a billion people, they just can't block it all. Um, so, and perhaps there's some, you know, uh, US satellites getting snuck in there. I really don't know. But, uh, every once in a while, we do get some new footage. Not a lot, but I'll review. So they're spraying the cities. The cities are all on lockdown. No one's leaving the street. One person per household can go out every couple days. If you are reported, they are dragging you out of there. This is a, a dead person uh, who just couldn't get help. Uh, we can see people crying in this video and then having to get into some bizarre truck with a box. In Shenzhen, if you are... In an apartment that is sick, then they're not allowing anyone in the entire apartment to, to leave. Here's a fellow getting dragged out who doesn't want to go. This is a drone that was flown over the city. So it looks like straight out of a zombie movie. 
Everyone is petrified. Um, a lot of smog. The rumor is that these uh, crematories are burning hundreds, if not thousands, of people a day that aren't being reported, and that's what this smog is, although the pollution is just outrageous in China as well. Uh, but yeah, we definitely see a lot of censorship and very few new videos coming out. Um, but the the main thing is it, tend, it seems like suddenly you lose oxygen and then you go into shock. And that's uh, what I think they really don't want to let the public know is how horrifying the death is, especially after a week of getting a fever. Um, now we have lots of cruise ships where people are trapped, thousands and thousands who, uh, they're just stuck on the cruise ship. They're getting tested every day. And if you're sick, they haul you off to a quarantine. If you're not, you have to stay on there. Every time a new person's found sick, they restart the two-week clock, which is what they believe is the incubation period. And now they're finding that these can actually last nine days, not five, on a surface because the, the virus has this crazy protein shell. And now they're having problems with their, uh, these are just birds that couldn't get access to food because no one wants to come to work, so they're dying. Uh, but they did have to kill a bunch, bunch of chickens who had bird flu, which is a very extreme uh, level of uh, mortality rate, somewhere around 67%. So just too many people in too few places. Oh, this is a clip that I like. So this is our crew of Americans we rescued. Think of Saving Private Ryan style. Here's the crazy outfit they have our U.S. Uh, soldiers wearing that are bringing these citizens back. And again, we don't have any data on how many of these folks are sick who we rescued, uh, who are primary government workers, diplomats, probably spies, etc., working in China. But Everybody not finished it yet. The only reason I say this is it's going to get really weird when everybody gets off the plane and you cannot. So, yeah, that's... Just so scary to have something invisible that's highly contagious that doesn't show up while it spreads and then suddenly kills you within two to three weeks. Uh, this is just horrifying, guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out shortly, but I do want to point out that Pete Buttigieg continues to surge in the polls alongside Bernie. Uh, so Bernie winning the election is the next big risk. If he gets in there, it could be detrimental to the stock and bond market. So that's the end of today's update. If there's a lot of breaking news this weekend, I might sneak out a weekend update. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you very much.